<laughs> Thanks, Chris. Okay, I'm Joe Short, and I'm from a startup called Demand Logic. And I guess you'll, you have heard and you're going to hear a lot about lots of small devices that um, emerge um, with a massive impact in a very exciting way. And it's a very powerful idea. But I think maybe I'm here just to say don't forget the big stuff. And in a way, don't forget the big old stuff. Our, our project is about trying to save energy in pretty large commercial buildings like this one. And it's easy to think that that job is done. And after something like 40 years of environmental awareness that we now have all that taped, and we don't. Um, but web technology can be brought to bear on that, pro on that problem. And that's what we set up our company to do. So there, there are four of us, and we kind of combine, if you like, web development and building services engineering. And we sort of brought that together um, in an offering that we hope will make quite, quite big scale savings. So just to kind of start off on this theme of big things, <laughs> this is Mike, uh, who's my colleague Mike, our technical director, who knows about all things building. Um, and this is just one chiller on the roof of quite a typical office building in London. And um, we could hardly hear ourselves speak while we were doing our little video for a funding project, um, standing up there. And it just kind of got us thinking, and we even forget this, that that single machine uses the same amount of electricity as about 750 normal homes. So, <laughs> so if that one is running when it shouldn't be running, then that's a massive issue. So that's kind of where, where we're trying to be. We're trying to combine this new stuff with this, what is actually quite an old problem. So just to, um, I'm not sure how electrical people are here, but this is, um, you often hear about sort of behaviour change projects, trying to convince people to use things like their mobile phone chargers less often, in the hope that this will combine to a big effect, which it will, and that is incredibly important. But I just thought I'd put the difference here of the cross-section of the cable that goes to your mobile phone charger, and the one that goes to that chiller on the roof there. <laughs> and uh, it, you need a much bigger cable. To, uh, to move that much electricity, that's 400,000 watts. Um, so that's kind of what we're dealing with. And just also, this is, well, that's on the cooling side. On the heating side, okay, to be fair, this isn't one building, it's two or three. But this is a boiler house. And these are, this is me, and this is a boiler. And these are huge machines. So, and and the, the optimization of these things is totally essential if we're going to solve this problem. This is just a pump house. And it's, again, not to forget the other kind of large plant items. Like, you can't see these very well, but there are quite big electrical pumps here to move cold water, hot water around the building. Again, roomfuls of these things. And some of them spinning when they're not meant to be spinning. And all kinds of issues going on. So the kind of things that happen in a building, um, and you wouldn't believe it, but it's true, is things like simultaneous heating and cooling. So your system is cooling one half of a room and heating the other half. And, or it's cooling water that then gets heated again. And this kind of thing is still happening, even in some quite posh looking buildings. And that's what we're there to try to discover. Um, but first I kind of want to go through why this might have happened. Oh, yeah, sorry about the picture of money. But um, <laughs> something we need, by the way. We don't, our turnover is a bit less than Arabs. But um, 500 million pounds is the rough cost annually of problems in the control systems in commercial buildings in Britain. And that's the cost of the lost energy per year. So it's a big issue, and it's a big issue even though, as I said, we've had a lot of awareness about, about this for quite a long time. Um, why? And this is a PC in the basement of um, a building which is actually until quite recently where they had the supervisor software which looks after the control system in that building. So that was where all of this massive data that came through from the building. They have sensors in every room, as you know. There are sensors on valves of every um, air conditioning unit above your head in the ceilings. Thousands of data points coming to this machine here and not being looked at by anything like the kind of people who should be looking at it. And the data in a form that's not really digestible. So <clears throat> don't get me wrong, building management systems, which is what I'm talking about, are incredibly effective things at keeping control, staying up 24-7 and doing their job. But they weren't designed to digest this data and to make it understandable to people. 
So that's what we are trying to do. Um, we've been operational now for about 10 months properly. We've got data collection devices now in several buildings. Um, and the way it works is it communicates with the building management system that's already there, harvesting quite a lot of data. And we're monitoring something like 4,000 items of plant, like the ones I just showed you, but also including um, ceiling air conditioning units. Um, so far, gathered something like 200 million values, sensor values, temperatures, pressures, etc., um, which is, for anyone interested, about 30 gigabytes worth of data. So we're pulling this stuff in, <coughs> and the whole point is to get this together and put it in front of people with decent analysis about why that energy is being wasted and which plants are not running optimally. So, um, for those of you who didn't know whether to go into this or not, this might be, <laughs> might be a little bit geeky. But this is the kind of data that we're getting in our first scan of a building. And it's what the engineers put in years ago <coughs> into the controllers that are distributed through the building. And all of these are different names for the amount of coldness going into a terminal unit above your head. So we're trying to sign with this coldness here on floor three or something, or four, but looks like, and here and here and here and here. And this guy here is a 16th century mathematician called Thomas Bayes. And it's just to show the kind of, he came up with a technique which is now used in spam detection and email, which is simple text analysis. And that's the kind of thing we're doing, reading through all of these labels in a building management system and saying, oh, that one must be a, this kind of plant and that one must be this kind of plant. Mm -hmm. And then what are we doing with it? So our hope is that putting this in front of the people that matter in a way that they can keep checking back with and it's quite sort of simple to understand will ensure that the, these, what are often quite simple to solve problems, get noticed. And this is a really simple one and we call it the major plant watchdog. And all it's doing is it's showing red when big items of plant like that chiller that you saw are operating when they really shouldn't be. And the user gets a chance just to set a calendar. That's a really simple idea. But we've now kind of churned out something like 50 of these because they're, you know, people like them. They've actually, you wouldn't believe that this kind of data isn't that visible in most buildings. And then in terms of data mining, um, <coughs> I don't know how much of this to explain, but the large items of plant on the roof are called upon by many smaller ones which are above each room. And these are trying to control the air inside the room. And these can often go haywire. And there are several hundred of them in a normal building. And it's very, very difficult to notice which one is not performing properly and might be the reason for that large chiller coming on. So what we're doing here is we're showing in a spread um, which of those terminal units are likely to be problematic, and I won't go into the details, but it's this kind of um, data crunching on bog standard traditional buildings is what, we're, what our job is. And this is a trick that um, was, again, very simple. Every time we suggested something that might be wrong in the building, we just added it to our shared table in our, on our web system so that the users could also see it. And it's just saying what each measure should what, what should be taken and whether it was taken or not, and a kind of high and low estimate of the amount of carbon that would be saved. And even though we're still at test stage, we've only been going 10 months. And we're scientist type people, we don't exaggerate a lot, right? We're being, <laughs> we're being quite careful about this figure, but we reckon that the total number of savings is about already a thousand tons of carbon a year now being saved because those measures have been put in place. So it's not, it's, it's, it's kind of again a message just to say don't, don't forget the really big stuff. And where are we now? So we're in test buildings. We basically want more buildings, more user experience, and we're seeking introductions with energy managers, CSR people, facilities people, etc. And that's it. Okay, guys, um, we're running a bit behind, but we do have time to take some questions. So we're going to take a round of. Um, Three questions for Joe, and then we'll move on to the next speaker. Any questions from anyone here at all? Maybe we won't. Well, okay, we have one question. Okay, so, sorry, is that James? James, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, James, a question from you. Uh, how easy was it to uh, sort of distinguish the major units from all the aggregated data with your, your Bayesian filters? And is it a really difficult task? It's no, no, it's actually quite okay. relatively easy. So the task is to use the human generated labels to work out what the underlying plant is. 
And Mike, who's been doing this for many years, uh, was kind of racing the machine. And uh, so uh, we're trying to put Mike's brain into a box. That's essentially what we're trying to do. Um, and in that, we did a kind of test as to how successful it was at finding, say, one kind of plant, which was these terminal units. And it actually did slightly better than Mike, in, <laughs> which, was, uh, which was quite good. That's good, it doesn't mean so. And it's not that, I mean, it's not that mysterious. It's there are sort of quite common initials used. It's just that they're all done in lots of different ways, with all kinds of dirt in the data. 